I love this desk. Hey, and welcome back to another lesson. My name's Gary, I'm a cybersecurity professional by day. And in this lesson, we're gonna use Metasploit whilst babysitting. If you've seen any of my recent videos, you'll know that we've been tinkering with Metasploitable 2, my favorite offline way to learn the basics of hacking. The company that makes Metasploitable is called Rapid7, and they have a product called Metasploit. So the idea is that you use Metasploit to attack Metasploitable. So let's look at the setup. So here we have two virtual machines. One is the Metasploitable 2 virtual machine, as you can see and the other is Kali Linux. Now, if you don't know how to set up Metasploitable 2, I've got a whole other video on that. I'll leave a link in the description as you would expect. Go check it out and then come back here. We're not gonna worry too much about this Metasploitable 2 virtual machine. We're just gonna keep that in the background. I already know the IP address for it. If you'd like to get the IP address for yours, you just log in with MSF admin, MSF admin, username and password, and then just type IF config and you'll see the IP address there 172.16.111.131 yours will likely be different we'll just exit out of that by the way when you interact with one of these virtual machines your mouse and your keyboard get locked into that machine so at the minute I really can't do anything even though I'm trying to click on the Kali VM it won't let me what you do is on a Mac you press control and command together and that releases the mouse, and then you can go click on the Kali VM and type over there. So Metasploit is built into Kali Linux by default. And if you type MSF, Metasploit Framework, console, all one word, it starts it. So let's just do that, because that's what you'll see if you go and look at another tutorial online. You'll see them type MSF console, and off they go. MSF console, and there we go starting the Metasploit console. And this looks great. We've got the funky little banner. It gives you the version number. It tells you how many exploits are inside of Metasploit. That's right, kids. 2,230 exploits inside this virtual machine. You run one of the exploits to get onto the machine. Once you're on the machine, you might want to deliver one of these 900 payloads. And then you might want to do some post exploitation work like sniffing around and doing lateral movement and stuff like that. The thing to do is type help and as you can see we get a whole load of help output which is fine. So let's look through some of these. Banner. Display an awesome Metasploit banner. That's the cute picture that we saw at the top. If I type banner again you'll see we get a new banner. And if I keep typing it it keeps changing. Pretty cute. Okay, back to help. Let's scroll up. This stuff at the top is all just sort of general stuff. If we scroll down to the more interesting things, like module commands. Search is very important because it searches module names and descriptions. So if we want to run a search for something like Eternal Blue, we could type search Eternal Blue and it'll find it. Now this is the bit that's really important. There's an entire database on the back end of Metasploit if you want, but if you just type MSF console and start Metasploit, it actually doesn't have a database on the back end. So let's exit Metasploit. Let's just type exit, control L to clear the screen. And I'm gonna type MSF DB init to initialize the database. Must be run as root. We type sudo exclamation mark, exclamation mark and then give it the password. Now it's creating the database. It's creating a user called MSF, database called MSF, another database called MSF underscore test. Let's put a config file in that location and it looks good to go. So let's just run MSF console again. Lovely. Let me just make this full screen. There we go. Get a nice new banner up. I love shells. <laughs> if you don't know what a shell is, don't worry, we'll get to it. I'll clear this to put it to the top. By the way, when I do clear, I'm just doing control and L on the keyboard. So now if we type help and we scroll up, 
you'll see there's a command here called creds. List all the credentials in the database. Let's type creds. And as you can see, we get this host origin service, public, private, realm, private key, etc. Now, if I come across some credentials when I'm hacking, what I do is I type creds add user Gary password, Gary's password, one, two, three, exclamation mark, secure, hit enter. And then if we type creds, you can see we now have those creds in there. That's really cool. That's really powerful. It saves you having to use like a text file or something like that. You can just put them straight into Metasploit. It's nice. And if I type help again and scroll up, you'll see a really cool command up here. This one is the one that we're interested in. Executes nmap and records the output automatically. Well, that sounds right up my street. So let's type db underscore nmap. And it tells us dash dash save db nmap dash dash save. And then we'll give it the IP address that we want, 172.16.111.131. Remember, yours will be different probably. We're gonna tell it to go really fast, five threads, verbose output, and we will run this. There we go. Finding all the ports. And if you've seen my other videos where we do nmap scans against Metasploitable 2, this output should look pretty familiar to you. But what's cool here is it's saving it into our database. But if you wanted to scan an entire network, you could change the IP address to cover the entire network range, fire it all into the database and have this beautiful output. So let's have a look. If I type hosts, you can see there is one host in the database. It's a Linux host, which is what Metasploitable 2 is built on. If I type services, we can see all of the services that we've got. So this is basically the output of the MMAP scan, but just structured in our little database here. And if I type help again, and we scroll back up, you can see here services, vulnerabilities, notes, loot, hosts. And if you'd like to see more about what each of these things can do, all you have to do is type creds-h, and it'll give you the help file for that creds component. And if you scroll back up, you'll get to the top of it. So. This is where I came earlier to do some quick homework because I haven't used this in a while. Add a username, password, and a realm. Add a username and password. So creds add user gallery password, guest password. With the space being in the middle here, that's why they've put the little quotation mark things around the outside to capture it all as one string. You can even add NTLM hashes, MD5 hashes, SSH keys, you can put the path to the SSH key. It is really, really powerful. So if you're doing hacking on a sort of bigger scale and you're attacking multiple machines at once using Metasploit, this is a really great way to do it. That's a quick tour of the Metasploit framework, but we're not done here. We're gonna exploit what we did previously in videos, exploiting VSFTPD 2.3.4 <gasps> with Metasploit. So if you wanna see that, stick around. Okay, let's take a look at hosts. We can see there is one host up ending in 131. And if we type services, we can see at the top, there's VSFTPD234. Now, if I do a search for VSFTPD and hit enter, you can see there is a matching exploit module for this, disclosed in 2011 with an excellent rank. Now, sometimes you'll see a whole bunch of results here. If I just do a search for FTP, you can see we have 174 results. And typing some of these in can be a bit of a pain in the butt, trying to type these things in, but you don't have to. You just need the number at the start of the line. If I wanted to use this one, I would type 165. What we wanna do is we just wanna type zero rather than having to type all of this stuff out we type use zero and that's it you can see at the bottom that the exploit has been loaded so we're now sort of inside that exploit so now what we need to do is we now need to configure this exploit because it doesn't know what we're going to point it at if we type show options we're going to use show options a lot by the way you can see here remote host remote port our hosts and our port means remote host and remote port so 
the IP address and the port of the thing that you're about to tack. Now, because it's an FTP service, it's making the assumption that it's running on port 21, which is correct. And you have to supply a port and a host, it's required. It even gives you a little description of what that means. And if we type set our host 172.16.111.131 and then show options, you can now see that that is set inside the exploit. The exploit is gonna open the door for us, but we need to put a grenade in there, a payload to make it do something. And if we type show payloads, you can see there is one at the bottom. By the way, I don't know why all of this garbage is showing up here. I'll do some Googling and try and figure that out. I'll leave a comment if I do figure it out. It shouldn't do that. But as you can see, there is one payload that is compatible with this module. And that's pretty clever because when you exploit some other services in the future, you might see 15 or 20 payloads that are applicable to the module that you're using. This one only has one. So we will set the payload zero and there it is. Again, we're using the number from the start of the line. Now, if we type show options, you don't actually see anything underneath here because the payload options are actually baked in by default. I was just showing you how it works whenever you go through those motions. If I type exploit, you can see it spawns the backdoor service. It found a shell. This looks good. We got user ID of zero root. And you can see we have command shell session two opened. Our computer on this port is talking to the victim computer on that port. And if you go and check out the other video on VSFTPD, you'll see we talk about port 6200 in that video. If I type uname-a, you can see that is the Linux Metasploitable 2 server. And if I type who am I, I am root. And if I type ifconfig, you can see 131, which is what we showed at the start when I showed you the IP address in Metasploitable 2. So we are definitely on that other machine. Now what's cool is if you type Control Z, you can background this session, press Y. And if we press back, we're back to the main Metasploitable menu. If I type Sessions, you can see there is one session with an ID of two. And if I type Sessions, dash I for interact and give it the number two, we can interact with that session and it basically puts us back to where we were. So if you've got sessions on multiple machines, you press control Z, background that session, jump into the other one. Really, really handy. So that's it folks. We've exploited VSFTPD using Metasploitable. I really hope you learned at least one new thing today. If you did, let me know what it was in the comments and I'll see you next time.